Good morning, church. We'd like to welcome you to another beautiful Sunday. What a privilege to be among the living one today. Just going to worship the master. Can I just encourage you wherever you are? Just lift him up in worship. Lift him up in praise. Give him all adoration. Because there is no one like him.
be fitting pretty. Wherever you are, just clap your hands and move to the right, move to the left.
church I'm happy to see you again we give glory to God it is time for us to go into the liberty prayer this morning I want us to give glory to God the Almighty who has kept us alive who has shed us from this virus we want to say thank you to Jehovah brethren please can we begin to thank God we are grateful oh Lord we are grateful, oh Lord, for all you have done for us. We are grateful, oh Lord. 
We are grateful, oh Lord. We are grateful, oh Lord, for all you have done for us. We are grateful, oh Lord. Heavenly Father, Lord, we say thank you. What can we say unto thee? All we have to say is thank you. Father, Lord, we want to say thank you. Jehovah, Lord God Almighty, Lord, we want to appreciate you this morning. Our Father and our God, Father, Lord, we are very grateful. Daddy, Lord, we are very grateful. Jehovah, Lord, we are very grateful. Our Father, Lord God Almighty, Lord, we thank you for our life. Father, we thank you, Lord, for our family. Daddy, Lord, we say thank you, Lord, for our loved ones. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your church. Father, Lord, come and take your glory in our life. Heavenly Father, Lord, we want to appreciate you. Lord, we want to say thank you, Father, Lord, for the gift of life. Daddy, Lord, we want to appreciate you, Lord God Almighty. Ah, Father, Lord, all we have to say is thank you. Father, Lord, all we have to say is thank you. Almighty Father, Lord, even when we have 10,000 tongues, oh Lord, Father, Lord, Father, Lord God Almighty, ah, it is not enough to say thank you. Almighty Father, Lord God of us, that the Lord take all the glory. You are worthy to be glorified. Daddy, you are worthy to be praised. All we have to say is thank you. That the Lord take all the glory in the eyes. The over Lord take all the glory in the eyes. In Jesus' mighty name we have given thanks. Amen. Father, Lord God Almighty, we want to say thank you, Lord God of us. Father, Lord, we want to say thank you, Lord, for your church. Because it is you that kept us alive. Father, Lord, we want to say thank you, Lord, for, this, for the beginning of this year, 2020. Lord God Almighty, it is you that sustained us. It is you that kept us. Daddy, Lord, we want to appreciate you once again. Jehovah, Lord God Almighty, Father, we want to say thank you, Lord. Daddy, Lord God Almighty, even in this season of pandemic, Lord, none of us have been found wanted. Daddy, Lord, we want to give glory to you. Daddy, Lord, we want to say thank you, Lord God Almighty. Lord, we appreciate you. We thank you, Lord, for our children. Daddy, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for our husband. Daddy, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for all our wives. Daddy, Lord, we want to say thank you. Daddy, Lord, we want to say thank you, Lord, for our family. Daddy, Lord, be thou exalted. Daddy, Lord, be thou glorified. Thank you, awesome God. In Jesus' name, we have given thanks. Everlasting Father, Lord, once again, Father, Lord, we want to say thank you, Lord, for the privilege, Lord, that you gave us, O Lord, as a church to plant, oh Lord God Almighty, because we know that everything is in your hand. Father, Lord, we want to say thank you, Lord God of us, because we are returning back to, to church. Daddy, Lord, we want to say thank you, Lord, for giving us the privilege, for giving us the opportunity, because it is your doing. Daddy, Lord, we want to say thank you, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Everlasting Father, Lord, according to your word, the Bible says that although in the book of, of, of Isaiah 26, verse 14 the bible said that although those god have ruled over us before but the god said that and he has buried their memories and they shall not rise up anymore heavenly father lord god almighty whose report shall we believe we shall believe the report of the lord father lord because your word can never be broken father lord god almighty because we look unto you as a child of god you say that you have buried their memories and these are not rise up anymore daddy lord we did not believe in the second wave of coronavirus oh we believe that you have wiped the coronavirus away on this land. Daddy, Lord, we want to say thank you. Father, Lord, mighty God, we want to give you all the glory because we choose to believe in your word. You say that you have buried the memory of coronavirus in this nation. Daddy, Lord, we want to say thank you, Father, because we know that it will not rise up anymore. Father, Lord, we want to say thank you, Lord God Almighty, because we know that you have buried the memories of the COVID-19. Father, Lord God Almighty, we appreciate you. Daddy, Lord, take all the glory. Father, take Call the adoration in Jesus' mighty name. Heavenly Father, Lord, once again, according to your word. The Bible said, you say that in the book of Isaiah chapter 45, verse 8, you say you will rain down your righteousness. You say, Oh, ye at open wide. And you say that you will rain down your righteousness. Father, Lord, we pray, Lord God Almighty, that upon this nation, 
upon this nether kingdom. Father, we pray, Lord, that you rain down your righteousness, O Lord. Father, Lord, rain down your salvation and let the whole heart receive your salvation. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Heavenly Father, Lord, we pray, Lord God of hosts, that you rain down your salvation unto this land, O Lord, unto the face of the heart, O Lord. In the name of Jesus, everlasting Father, Lord, we pray that you rain down your righteousness. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, Lord, rain down your righteousness, O Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, and let the whole earth begin to receive your salvation. And let the whole earth, O Lord, begin to receive your righteousness. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, in the name of Jesus, everlasting Father, Lord God Almighty, Lord, we pray, O Lord, this morning, that you will rain down your righteousness, O Lord, into this great beating, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, Lord, rain down your righteousness. Because we the Bible says that, that as your name be lifted up, you say that you will draw all men to yourself. Father, Lord, we pray, O Lord, that you draw all men to yourself, in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, you will draw all men to yourself, in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, Lord, we cry unto you, our Father and our God. Lord, we pray, O Lord, that you will draw all men to yourself and let your name alone be glorified. Father, Lord, let your name alone be glorified. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, Lord God Almighty. In Jesus' name. Everlasting Father, Lord, we are very grateful once again. Daddy, Lord, we want to say thank you, Lord God of hosts, for bringing us back to your house. Father, Lord, we cannot do it on our own. Our Father and our God, Lord, we lay it down unto you. Because we cannot do things on our own. Because we are powerless without you. Because we are nothing without you. Father, Lord, we say over to you, Lord, as we are returning back to to your house. Father, Lord, we say, oh, Lord, over to you. Oh, Lord, God Almighty, come and take charge, oh, Lord. Father, Lord, God Almighty, Lord, let the power and the fire of the Holy Ghost, oh, Lord, be released into this service that we are about to start again in your church, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, Lord, be thou exalted. Father, be thou glorified, oh, Lord. Thank you, almighty God. In Jesus' our wonderful name, we have prayed. Amen. Thank you, thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Good morning, church. Today's congregational aim is count your blessings.
Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, it is yet that time again. Good morning. It is yet that time again for us to give back with our substance. It is yet that time again to give back to the number one provider, the one who gives us the strength, the wisdom, the knowledge and understanding to acquire wealth. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we all know our service is not complete without our tithes and our offering. This morning, let us say thank you with our substance. Let us say thank you to the number one provider who has kept you and I throughout this unprecedented times. The Bible says we should give with a grateful heart, not with groaning. I plead with you, brothers and sisters in Christ, this morning, let us do as we have been commanded to say thank you, Lord, to say thank you for the little, to say thank you for the many, to say thank you that you continue to meet all our needs. Let's not also forget our tights, 10% of our earnings, so that there will be enough in the storehouse so there'll be enough in the house of the lord so that we can meet all our obligations let us not forget to give 10 percent of our earnings as instructed in the book of malachi i'll give you a few more seconds to enable you to log into your mobile devices or telephone banking or you may have done it already. Nevertheless, let us commit our hearts to our offerings this morning. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, what more can we say but thank you, Lord? Thank you because it is you that gives us the strength even to make wealth. Thank you because it is you that gives us the wisdom even to acquire this finance. Father, with a little token, or a little gesture for us just to recognize who you are and what you have done. Father, come and accept our offering this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, as we are given into your storehouse this morning, O oh Lord, we ask that the monies will be used to transform your church and to win more souls into your kingdom in the mighty name of Jesus. Dear Heavenly Father, for those who have given but wanted to give more for one reason or other, Father, we thank because the word tells us that you look within our hearts, not in terms of what we give, but in terms of what our heart gives. Dear Heavenly Father, I beseech thee, I pray for all those who have given but wanted to give more. This time next week, put them in the position to give more in the mighty name of Jesus. We also recognize all our taxpayers, O oh Lord, those that have hearkened unto your commandments and given 10% of their earnings. Father, you said that you will bless them, bless them more so that they can even not be able to keep or contain the blessing, O oh Lord. During this unprecedented time, I pray for the titans, you shall give them unprecedented blessings in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, despite the society, despite what is going around, they have still hearken unto your promise O lord father fulfill your part in the mighty name of jesus as they are given their tights financially it will not be tight for them in the mighty name of jesus father testimony shall be their song in the mighty name of jesus and for all of us who are here this morning O lord father our service this morning shall be acceptable in thy name let our tithes and offering today O lord let it speak for us in our day of trouble in the mighty name of jesus we give you all the honor we give you all the praise in jesus mighty name we are prayed amen amen you are now listening to a powerful ministration from pastor kola akimbi of RCCG, the House of Resurrection Parish. Praise the Lord. Praise the name. 
name of the Lord. Good morning, everybody. I want to welcome you to another Sunday service, the third Sunday in the month of August. I believe that today God has something special for you. I want you to get excited and we're going to pray before we look at the Word of God. Um, I decrease that you may increase, that your name may be glorified. Thank you, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name. I also want to appreciate the choir for a wonderful ministration this morning. For a few minutes, let's appreciate the choir, the team, the choristers. God bless you. And the choir master, thank you for your endless time and support in this season. Amen. Amen. Isaiah 45, Isaiah 45, from verse 15 to 18. Truly, you are God who hides yourself. You are God of Israel, the Savior. They shall be ashamed and also be disgraced, all of them. Hear me well. The unstoppable God has sent me to you this morning to declare into your life that they shall be ashamed. Those who is waiting for your downfall, those who is saying you will not finish your 2020, they shall be ashamed and be disgraced, all of them, in the name of Jesus. Whether is a member of your family, whether it's a colleague at work, whether it's your medical practitioner that says that there's no hope for you, in the name that is above every name, they shall be disgraced in the name of Jesus. So the scripture says, and you're going to pray, they shall be ashamed <coughs> and also be disgraced all of them, they shall go in confusion together, who are makers of idols. But the Lord shall be saved, but Israel shall be saved by the Lord. But Israel shall be saved by the Lord. But their king beasts shall be saved by the Lord. The member of House of Resurrection shall be saved by the Lord. The Olukotun shall be saved by the Lord. I want you to mention your name. Shall be saved by the Lord. You'll be saved from the arrows of the enemy. You'll be saved from the pestilence of the enemy. You'll be saved from the plan and the counsel of the enemy. Why don't you lift up your voice and say, Father, in the name that is above every name, in the remaining days, in the month of August, save me and my household from sudden death. Save us from pain, from shame. Save us from every tribulation. Save us from every arrow of the enemy. O oh Lord, my God, save us in the name of Jesus. He said, with an everlasting salvation, you shall not be ashamed and be disgraced. Why don't you pray? Say, Father, every power that wants to disgrace me, that wants to put me to shame, let that power, let that power face your judgment. Every man, every woman, every boy, every girl that is walking behind the scene against my destiny, let the power of God, let Jehovah, let it show face. Let it disgrace them in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. 
He said, you shall not be ashamed or be disgraced. Say it to yourself, I, Kala Wale, shall not be ashamed. I will not be disgraced. Say it to yourself, I, Kala Wale, shall not be ashamed. I will not be disgraced forever and ever in Jesus' name. And verse 18, he said, For this, for thou said the Lord, who created the heavens, who is God, who formed the earth and made it, who has established it, who do not create it in vain, who formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Hallelujah. So, God is boasting of himself. Why don't you ask the unstoppable God, who has established the earth for you to enjoy it? Why don't they declare and say, who formed the earth and made it the unstoppable God? Declare and say, Father, in the name that is above every name, I declare with my mouth, by the authority in the name of Jesus, that the unstoppable God will arise for me. He will show his power in my life, in the life of my children, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I don't want to take much of our time. Let's quickly look at today's topic, Unstoppable. I've talked about Unstoppable in the first Sunday. The Unstoppable God. And I, we did Unstoppable God part one, part two. But this one is just unstoppable. Unstoppable is the topic. And the text is Matthew 16, 18. Upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of ages, the gates of hell will not prevail. The gates of ages will not overpower it. I pray for someone today in the name that is above every name. No thing, nothing will overpower you in the name of Jesus. Hear me well. God is saying from that text, I will build my church on the rock. Somebody say, why is it on the rock? Because he is a God and he's unstoppable. Why is he not that he's, why is he not building it on the on the ground? It does not really matter where God builds his church. Nothing will shake his church. The wind cannot carry his church. Somebody said, but the rock is not the place where you build. That's where God chooses to build. That's why we call him unstoppable God. Hear me well. I want to introduce this unstoppable God to you. If the Red Sea cannot stop Moses from crossing over, if the wall of Jericho cannot stop Joshua from crossing over, if the river Jordan cannot stop Elijah and Elisha from crossing over, in 1 Kings chapter 2 verse 8, the Bible says, in 1 Kings chapter 2 verse 8, now Elijah took his mantle, rolled it up, and struck the water, and it was divided, and it was divided this way and that, so that the two of them cross over on the dry ground. So I'm talking about a God that even River Jordan could not stop him. So what is it that the enemy says that they will stop it? If you think you can stop the work of God, many people are called. Some are chosen. But hear me well. A 
it is not everybody that God has called to build a house for him. He made it very clear to David. He said, David, sorry, you cannot build a temple for me. Your next generation, your son will build for me. In today's world, many people want to become a pastor and they are not called to be. They will do all gimmicks, all games within a local assembly so that they can get the title. But hear me well, some people are called. If you take away the building, they will still function. You know why? Because they are called by God. And God is saying that he is unstoppable. Anyone I give the mantle to, nothing can stop. Elijah, River Jordan could not stop Elijah. Because he was a carrier of God's mantle. Joshua, nothing could stop him for Jericho. The wall of Jericho had to come down so that he can be victorious. Hear me well. According to the passage, 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 1 to 10. 2 Kings chapter 2. We'll see something there because I'm going to dwell in there. And we're going to use Elisha as a case study. Despite all what the sons of the prophet said to Elisha, he was unstoppable. He was very clear. They made gesture of him. They made fun of him. But he was very clear. In 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 1 to 10. But we're going to read 1 to 4. And it came to pass when the Lord was about to take Elijah to heaven by a wild way. Then Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. Then Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me to better. But Elijah said, As the Lord lives, and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. Somebody say, I will not leave you. You better hold on to what you have before it's being taken away from you. Many of us, we don't appreciate what we have until you lose it. <laughs> My prayer is that you will not lose what you have in the name of Jesus. So Elisha said, Please, for the Lord has sent me to, to send me on to better. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives, and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So they went down to better. Now the sons of the prophet who were at better came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that the Lord will take away your master from, from over you today? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Then Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. They both left for Gilgal to Bethel. They both left from Bethel to Jericho. They both left from Jericho for Jordan, a place of reward. Elijah, his master, wanted him to stop. But Elisha refused. The sons of the prophet also persuaded him to stop. But Elisha said, unstoppable. Hallelujah. No matter what anybody does. My vision is very clear. I am driving a bus. And the bus is to take people to the place 
of their destination to the eternal place of glory. No matter, COVID cannot stop the vision of God. No matter, man cannot stop it. Can I say the, the last one? Economy of the nation, financial power cannot stop it. Because he said, I will build my church and the gates of hell. Elisha was very clear that nothing will stop me from missing the double portion I'm going to get from Elijah. The sons of the prophet persuaded him. But he was not moved by what they were saying. He was very focused. What am I saying? Brethren, be focused. Whatever God has said you will be, you will be. Of recent, I was saying to somebody, I said, I am very clear. I am not intimidated by anybody's grammar or anointing. The grace God gives me is a unique one. And I am not in a competition with anybody. So, if anybody is in a competition with me, sorry. I, I don't even see the competition. I just serve God. I just do what God has called me to do. And that's why the gift of God I have is a unique one. Is a unique one. Hallelujah. Now, let's quickly look at the characteristics of unstoppable. Number one. Someone that is unstoppable is a desperate, they are desperate people. Elisha was desperate. They did not pay attention to distraction or attraction. Elisha ignored the sons of the prophet who tried to discourage him. You must reject the devil's offer in order to go far. For you to be unstoppable, you must reject the devil's offer in order to go far. Sir, you will go far. Ma, you will go far. You must be desperate. Desperate that nothing will stop you. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Desperate knowing that if God be for me, who can be against me? Desperate knowing that it does not really matter what the world is saying, what the economy of the world is saying, whether there's a recession, whether the Prime Minister of Great Britain is saying we're in recession, but you are saying you are in abundance. Your time of harvest has come. Hear me well. This is the time you must be desperate, knowing that your source is not from the economy of this world. Your source is from the economy of heaven. Knowing that you will not beg. You are not a beggar. The heavens and the earth is created by your Father. You have a desperate heart. Tell me well, if anything is a need in your life, when you are desperate, heaven will make it available for you. Number two, the unstoppable are the people who are willing to acquire what they desire. Hmm, I like that. They acquire what they desire. So they are unstoppable, no matter what. They have a clear goal. I want to have a first class. They desire it. And they begin to walk, or began to walk towards it. Elisha left his 
He selected Job and follow Elijah. Hear me well. If you are a prize payer, you will become a prize winner. If you don't pay a price for something, then people will stop you. I remember one of the quotes of Carl Lewis in the time of great Carl Lewis that won four gold medals. He said, it is in the time, I paraphrase it, is it is the, is, 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 the, is, the, is the hours you put into your practice that helps you on the track and field. God bless people like David Becker. After his teammate has finished training in Manchester United, he will wait behind two hours to practice free kick. Two hours. Hear me well. The prize player had the prize winners. That's why you become outstanding. For you to be unstoppable is what you require. You will acquire what you desire. I mean, sorry. You will acquire what, what? You desire. Number three. The unstoppable are people who do not look at the obscure, but they, but they focus on their goal. They focus on their goal. If you can see the invisible, then you can do the impossible. Many eyes look, but few eyes see. What do you see? Sir, ma, mother, elder, brother, pastor, position, title. What do you see? Some of us, we have a small mentality. We see. We can't see beyond what you see. It is what you see that takes you far. Focus on your goal. Don't use another man's wristwatch. Some people they will, they will be wearing they will, they, someone's wristwatch will be on their head. You can't look at the time. I can't look at the time that is in the hand of Brother Emmanuel Lukotu. And say, oh, the time on his hand is what I'm following. I will not be sure of the exact time. But if I have my own, I will look at it every minute to be sure of what the time says. The God, unstoppable people. Stay focused on your goal. Number four, the unstoppable are people who do not give up easily. You don't give up. The last two weeks I've been talking about God, but this message is for you. Are you unstoppable? Elisha was unstoppable. He was very clear. No wonder he did great works, greater works than what Elijah did. No wonder he got double portion. No wonder his bone in the grave raised a dead man. Because he was unstoppable. One of the Bible scholars says that even Elisha did not finish his assignment. But even at death, he was still unstoppable to raise the dead up. Hallelujah. 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 So, the unstoppable are people 
who do not give up easily? Elisha never gave up. Don't give up. Abraham Lincoln is a good example of an unstoppable one. He suffered several defeats but stood firm until he eventually became the President of the United States of America. He kept losing. He kept coming back. He did not give up. You know, many of us, we give up at the verge, at the edge of our miracle. That will not be your portion. I, 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 I believe you will shout a louder in it. I said, that will not be your portion in the name of Jesus. Number five, the unstoppable are those whose motto is I can. They see possibility and not probability or impossibility. Philippians 4, 13. The unstoppable are those whose motto is, I can, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Everybody says there's no way, says a lie, there's a way. And hear me well, churches might close down in this pandemic, but I've come to declare to you, House of Resurrection will not close down. And not only that we will not close down, by this time next year, we will be in our own building. Because we God, all things are possible. I am not serving man. I am not serving people. I am a servant of a living God. Called by God to be a blessing to generations. I prophesy to your life, the unstoppable God will do wonder because nothing will stop me. I am called to press forward, to move mountain, to possess my possession. I don't care what people say. I don't care what the economy of a nation says. What I know in this season is that I can do it. You can do it. We can do it. Hallelujah. Amen. Number six. The unstoppable are people who always get results. Elisha never stopped until he got the double portion. Jacob never stopped serving his father-in-law until he got Rachel. Don't give up, oh brother. You must get a result. How far? Delay is not a denier. I like the story of that Jacob. Jacob did not stop serving his father-in-law. His father-in-law played tricks on him. He did another seven years. But he still married Rachel, the one he loved. Hear me well. Don't give up on God. Don't give up on God. Oh, I am 37 now. My husband has not come, so I will settle for one baba, one grandfather, and become second wife. Oh, I've been trusting God for the fruit of the womb. I am 45 now. I have not conceived. So I will go and meet one occultic man to give you one diabolic thing to eat, to swallow, to eat, so that you can conceive. Don't trade your, your faith for anything. Never trade your faith for anything. Never trade your belief for anything. Unstoppable people will always get a result. It does not really matter how long, but the result will come. I remember when we came into this Blenheim Business Center, one of our neighbors on the other street, he said he will make sure we leave this building. The officer of 
Health and Council said it to me on the phone. Said, Pastor Cola, I can guarantee you that I will chase you out of that building because there is a lot of complaint. But I said that is not possible. God can never be homeless. We got a result. And God fought our battle. The man sold his house and ran away from the streets. Hallelujah. Every enemy that says that you will not have peace, God will unseat there in the name of Jesus. Finally, the unstoppable people who do not just talk, but they act. Brethren, Whatever you want to do, do it fast. Do not procrastinate. Procrastination is a thief of opportunity. The unstoppable people do not just talk. Many people talk. They talk behind. They talk at the back. They say, they say I can do better than Brother Emmanuel. But they will not come forward to do what Brother Emmanuel is doing. They can talk and talk. Why don't you act and take the role of Brother Emmanuel and do it better? It's easy to talk. You know the fault? Whose fault is BT that says talking is cheap? If BT has not made it cheap, maybe many people will seal their mouth and will stop talking. I remember when we first came into Britain, when mobile phone was very, very costly. When you are calling somebody, you think about what you are going to say. Then you pay for call. The person receiving call will pay for call. Hallelujah. But the world has changed. <laughs> the world has changed. But I want to tell you, the unstoppable people do not just talk. They act. So brethren, sir, ma, act. Whatever you want to do, do it fast. I will close by giving you this scripture. And that is in Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 19. There is nothing too hard for my God to do. Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 19. Nothing too hard. And then in that Jeremiah, in that Jeremiah 32, if you go to verse 27, and I will close. Verse 27 of Jeremiah 32, as I close. He said, Behold, I am the Lord, and the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me to do? God is saying that if you know that he is a God unstoppable, then you, his son, his daughter, you will become unstoppable. So I've come to tell you, and I've come to introduce that God to someone that is hearing me. If you do not know Jesus, your Satan can stop you. Daniel prayed. It's because he knew Jesus. He knew God. He had to pray again. And God had to send Angel Michael to disarm Satan and bring his prayer to manifestation. So if you do not know Jesus as Lord and Savior, your prayer will be wasted. The Prince of Pasha will withhold your prayer. But you have an opportunity this morning by saying, Father, I confess my sins. You are faithful. You are just to forgive me and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I receive forgiveness of sin through the power of the blood of the cross. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Brethren, I have prayed and I believe that one or two people have received Christ to their life. And before I go, stretch your hands towards 
your devices. And I pray this simple prayer of faith with you. That the unstoppable God will turn you to become unstoppable in anything you desire. Everything you lay your hands on. Everything you have asked God for in this 2020. Jehovah God will bring it to manifestation. In the name of Jesus. Your focus will not change. Your heart will not be weary. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Your words will be from today. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Thank you and God bless you. Remember, we are getting ready to go back to our building. We're getting ready to go back to our building and our first service will be on the 6th of September 2020. It's a Thanksgiving Sunday. We will still come on air. We will still show and we come on air but come and be a partaker of a new thing that God is about to do. There is a new thing God has packed for us for the month of September. Hear me well. I heard this afternoon that is a month of new beginning. September is our month of new beginning. Is God going to start a new thing in your life? Yes, because you are unstoppable. God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening. We hope that you have been blessed by this exhortation. Please visit www.rccgthorp.org.uk for more powerful sermons to uplift your souls. God bless you.